G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder with Mags and today we're checking out the AMX M4, the new rank 4 battle rating 6.0 French medium tank. So from an historical standpoint there's not a huge amount to talk about with the AMX M4. It was a prototype tank of which only two were built that started development in March 1945 as the first steps in France's attempt to rebuild its military following its liberation from Nazi Germany. The two prototypes that were developed were fully functional and while they did perform well in trials, the design was ultimately rejected as it didn't feature heavy enough armament and so the prototype series was to develop into later tanks that we will see as some of them are present in the War Thunder tech tree. So, since we're already on the subject of armament, the AMX M4 is armed with a 90mm SA45 auto-loading cannon. The cannon reloads from a drum-style magazine that can carry a maximum of 7 shots per drum for a grand total of 49 shots over the entire tank. The time between shots on the autoloader is 6.6 .6 seconds with a 38 second reload for the entire drum once the drum has been depleted. And as a secondary weapon, the tank also carries a 7.5mm Mach 31 machine gun with 5,000 rounds of ammunition. Now of course the AMX M4 features an oscillating turret, maximum turret rotation speed is 25.5 degrees per second which is kind of fantastic. It carries a maximum of 8 degrees gun depression plus 15 degrees of gun elevation and it's actually pretty reasonably armoured although we'll come back to that in just a moment. So in today's battle we're here on Ardennes, we're versing the Germans. And we've just found an incredibly lucky tiger straight through the front plate, so that's him out of commission. And there's a hell of a firefight going on here at the moment. You can see the gun smoke billowing around. It was actually really difficult to spot the tanks through it. And just get a glimpse of something going through here. It looks like a Yag Panther. And unfortunately, I hit the front plate rather than the side. So I back off. I'm sort of waiting for the shock to come. Tiger comes out of the smoke. Another kill straight through the front plate. And I'm backing off here looking for the Yag Panther, but I can't see it coming out of the smoke and I didn't see an explosion for it, but there is a Walker Bulldog in there and it doesn't seem to be under attack, so I can only assume that the Yag Panther has been taken out. In fact, I reckon that that pillar of smoke around the corner is probably the Yag Panther. So this area now looks clean, so we're beginning to advance forward. And sure enough, yep, that was the Yag Panther. More smoke coming up behind, another wrecked vehicle. Can't see exactly what it is, but I can't see any movement in there anywhere. So just checking my corners as I'm moving between the buildings. And I have absolutely no idea what this little M5 is doing, but he's brave, I'll give him that. So at this point, I'm going to go for a little bit of a walk through the forest just to see whether or not there is anything out here. And why I'm doing that, let's go back to talking about the tank. So, mobility. The M4 is a 52 ton tank with a 1000 horsepower engine. Top listed speed is 51 kilometers per hour, but in reality it really only reaches about low 40s on most terrain at best. It can wind out further if you can get a little bit of a downhill slope, but that's true of most tanks. Maximum inclination is 41 degrees, which is good, it can get up uh, some pretty wide variety of hills, and as you can see it is a very, very agile on the hull. Very responsive, very quick to shift direction if you need it to. Now the armour on the M4 is interesting, particularly around the turret, but we'll talk about the hull first. The hull's 80mm on the front, 30mm at maximum on the sides and 40 to the rear, with the front plate being angled back at 55 degrees. With correct angling you can get this front plate up to around 140mm worth of armour, which is actually quite significant, but you have to be very careful about doing it. The front left and right hand corners of the tank are both angled back at 45 degrees with 39 degrees of back slope and the armour there is only 60 millimetres thick, which means on a 45 degree angle it only gets to 76 millimetres of armour and directly behind those plates are the ammo racks for the tank. Now if you point the nose of the tank directly at the enemy these plates go up to 125 millimetres which is good enough to bounce most shots but it does make the front potentially vulnerable especially to higher tier tanks. And that is a Tiger II out of play. Now while initially it seems best to not angle, and in most cases this is the case, it is possible to do so. If you can angle out at about 25 to 30 degrees, you can keep 100mm of armour on these angled front plates while seeing an increase across the entire front of the tank. It's tricky to do, but it can be useful to keep in mind. Now the turret is an entirely different beast, being an oscillating turret. The main body of the turret where the gun is mounted is only 85mm from the front, but again it's angled back at 55 degrees, giving you effectively 165mm of armour on shots directly from the front. It's also got bumps on it which changes the angle and can get out to around 175 to 180 depending on where the shots hit and the angle of the turret at the time. But that's not where it ends. 
The main body of the turret actually extends inside of the hull, and the lip around the front face of the oscillating turret carries an additional 40mm of armour curved at 15 degrees. If you shoot at this lip, you're essentially shooting at 125mm of armour with a 15 degree curvature and a space gap. This combination of armour angles and thickness actually makes the M4 incredibly tanky from the front. Not so much from the sides and the rear, however. The sides of the hull are only 30mm thick with 40mm to the rear armour, the sides of the turret are only 60mm thick with 40mm to the rear, and there are weak spots even in that armour. For example, underneath the flat section at the rear of the turret, there is a plate at the back of the oscillating turret that is only 25mm thick. Most standard anti-aircraft guns will be able to penetrate this if they can get a shot in there. And speaking of anti-aircraft guns... And there's Kill 5. So, another weakness that's worth mentioning is actually from the air. The M4 doesn't look like a particularly big tank, but in terms of ground coverage and footprint, it's actually pretty close to the size of a King Tiger. Now, the top armour on the tank isn't actually all that bad. It's 20mm thick, and that's enough to handle most of the 50 caliber machine gun and even some of the cannon fire that will come in your direction. However, as you can see, there is vent holes for the engines all across the top of the top plate of the tank. The armour over these vents is only 8mm thick and can be penetrated by 50 calibre fire. So, American aircraft with large numbers of 50 cals, I'm looking mainly at P-47s, as they are incredibly common for doing this and deployment in ground forces, can simply shoot and paint the back of your tank with bullets. Some of them are going to go through, and these vents lead directly into the rear sections of the ammo racks, the fuel tanks, and the engine itself. Being lit on fire by even air-to-air -air rounds from a P-47 by being strafed is actually pretty common in this machine. And that was a pretty perfect example of the pain of waiting for the drum to be reloaded in the M4, or really on any auto-loading tank. 38 seconds isn't a huge amount of time, but when you're facing down another tank and you sort of haven't got a way out, it can be an eternity. But anyways, we've disabled the gun, one shot into the rear, set the tank on fire, that'll make sure its repair's not going to cycle through anytime soon, and one shot straight into the front of the hull. Kill number six. Now the last thing to bring up on the AMX M4 before we go to the results of the video is the ammunition types. And I bring this up last because there's really not a lot to say. There are only two types of ammunition you get access to on this tank and they're both available from the moment you unlock it. The first is the 90mm APC or armour piercing cap shell. It's 11kg shell, 1000 meters per second muzzle velocity with a penetration of 193mm at 10 meters, 191 at 100 meters, and 180 at 500 meters. This shell is identical to every single shell fired by every French 90mm gun in this battle range and it is a really good shell at 1000 meters per second. It's extremely accurate over range, it gets to the target fast, it's very easy to lead. It's just a good all-around shell. The second is a 90mm HE shell. Now, it's an 11kg shell, 700m per second, so it's a little bit slower than its armor piercing counterpart, but it does have 949 grams of explosive mass, so it's not a bad HE shell. That said, I do not recommend you actually bother carrying this shell, and I don't recommend it because of the autoloader. As you saw, it takes 38 seconds to reload the drum on this tank. Now, you cannot just stick a HE shell into the drum. You either get a full load of AP or you get a full load of HE. And every time you want to change, it takes 38 seconds to switch between ammunition types because the whole drum needs to be changed over. So if you run into a situation where you might want to switch to HE, say encountering a self-propelled anti-aircraft gun and you want to guarantee a kill on it, you now have to wait 38 seconds after spotting the vehicle to reload to the HE drum then take aim and fire the shot. In that point, the self-propelled anti-aircraft gun has likely already seen you, and with some of the weak points in this tank, particularly the ones around the back of the turret, you've likely already been shot and killed. It's better just to fire what you've got in the AP drum and continue on. And yeah, that's all the ammunition types that this tank gets access to, and as I said before, both are available the second you unlock the tank, so there is no unlocking future shells. And that's also pretty much the end of the battle. There was only two enemy vehicles remaining. One was a self-propelled anti-aircraft gun that dropped the artillery strike on the cap circle. It's just been eliminated. The second vehicle, it took us a little while to find. It was a panther hiding behind a farmhouse not far from the spawn point. And, well, that was a kill assist. So anyways, let's go through to the results. 
So the results for the match. First place for the team with no deaths, 6 kills, 1 assist and 2 base captures for 2,188 points. Awards for the match were Double Strike, Tank Rescuer times 2, Shadow Strike Streak times 5, One Shot Professional times 6, Base Capture times 2, Survivor, The Best Squad and Heavy Metal Fury. This totaled out to 4,120 research points in total, with 3,920 going to modifications research, not that it needed to, this is a spaded vehicle, and 2,022 going to vehicle research, which is the AMX 30B2 that I'm currently attempting to unlock. Credit earnings for the match was 51,080 silver lions, and the total battle time was 12 minutes and 34 seconds. So, what's my opinions on the AMX M4? I really, really like this tank. I was not expecting much from it when I first unlocked it. I was expecting it just to be a weaker version of its bigger brother, the Lorraine 40T. But having spent some time with both tanks, I actually prefer it over the Lorraine 40T now. It's a great all-rounder. It's extremely mobile, it's extremely agile, it's got good front armor, and even though the gun is a little bit smaller in regards to the 90mm, the reloads are much quicker, and the gun itself is still devastating. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. As always, remember to check the video description down below for links to my social media, to my Patreon, and to my Twitch channel. And until next time, remember to click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, take care, mates.